following motion, whereas it is provided by Section 631A of the Public Finance Management Act, number 14 of 2020, the Act, that the Minister of Finance may, by affirmative resolution of Parliament, borrow from a bank or other financial institution for the capital or recurrent expenditure of government, and whereas it is further provided by Section 64 of the Act, that money borrowed by the government must be paid into and form part of the consolidated fund, and whereas the Minister of Finance considers it necessary to borrow an amount of U.S. dollars, 102 million, 128,294, from the Export-Import Bank of the Republic of China to provide budgetary support for the fiscal year 2022-2023, and whereas the loan is repayable in 20 years, commencing from the date of first disbursement of the loan, inclusive of a grace period of five years, and whereas the loan is repayable in 30 consecutive in equal or as nearly equal as possible semi-annual installments, the first of which must be made in the last day of the 66 months from the date the first advance under the loan is made by the Export-Import Bank of the Republic of China, <laughs> and whereas interest is payable at the rate of six months Chicago Mercantile Exchange term secured overnight financing rate plus 0.2 percent and 1.25 percent per annum, and whereas if the full amount of the loan has been drawn down, each principal installment must be in the amount of U.S. Three million four hundred four thousand two hundred seventy-seven, except that the last principal installment must be the amount of U.S. three million four hundred four thousand two hundred and sixty-one. Be it resolved that the Parliament authorizes the Minister for Finance to borrow the amount of U.S. hundred two million one hundred twenty-eight thousand two hundred ninety-four from from the Export-Import Bank of the Republic of China to provide budgetary support for the fiscal year 2022 to 2023. Be it further resolved, the loan is repayable in 20 years, commencing from the date of the first disbursement of the loan, inclusive of a grace period of five years. The loan is repayable in 30 consecutive equal or as nearly equal as possible semi-annual installments the first of which must be made on the last day of the 66th month from the date the first advance under the loan is made by the Export-Import Bank of the Republic of China. Interest is payable at the rate of the six-month Chicago Mercantile Exchange term secured overnight financing plus zero rate plus 0.2 percent and 1.25 percent per annum. If the full amount of the loan has been drawn down, each principal installment must be made in the amount of U.S. dollars three million four hundred four thousand two hundred seventy-seven, except that the last principal installment must be in the amount of U.S. dollars three million four hundred four thousand two hundred and sixty-six two hundred sixty-one dollars. Mr. Speaker, the resolution, as read before Parliament, is to seek the approval of the government to borrow U.S. dollars. 102.1 million or EC 277.4 million from the Export Import Bank of the Republic of China for budgetary support for the fiscal year 2022-2023. Mr. Speaker, in my inaugural budget address on March 29, I proposed and Parliament approved expenditure in the amount of 1.842 billion for the fiscal year 2022 to 2023. To finance that expenditure, I indicated that revenue and grants in the amount of 1.327 billion will be used, and after taking consideration refunds, the government will have to borrow 505.12 million. That was stated clearly in the budget statement. Mr. Speaker, I further indicated that the amount of 425.4 million would come from external sources, and this is why we are here today to borrow from the Exim, Im, Exim Import Bank, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the overall objective is as follows: to provide budgetary support to the government 
for its national budget for the fiscal year 2022-2023 to meet government's ongoing recurrent obligations and capital expenditures to settle long-standing cash flow related issues which have hindered progress towards fiscal sustainability and complete recovery. Mr. Speaker, this loan provides a rare opportunity to significantly alter the macroeconomic and social landscape of St. Lucia. The loan will assist the government and people of St. Lucia in dealing with one, economic recovery and growth, two, health expenditure, three, infrastructural programs for other recurrent expenditure. Mr. Speaker, more specifically, these funds will be utilized to reprofile expensive components of the central government's official public debt stock, fund social and capital projects, and eliminate some high levels of liabilities, such as payables and outstanding amounts due to land acquisition and other efforts. Mr. Speaker, the loan will be done to effect a shift in the following areas, debt reduction and reprofiling. Central government debt, Mr. Speaker, stands at 3.9 billion, of which bonds and notes contribute 51.6% of the debt portfolio and is the most expensive of the government debt. The average interest rate of bonds are 7% and account for 97 million in interest payments annually. Significantly reducing this interest expense can result in savings in excess of $40 million annually. This component of the project will support government's ongoing expenditure, that is a mark towards economic recovery post, post the downturn in economic growth experienced by St. Lucia of over 26%. Mr. Speaker, what this means is that the government will try to convert some of the short-term loans into longer term instruments, just saving on, on interest payments. Some $40 million worth of interest payments will be saved, which can be used for, for, for other purposes, Mr. Speaker. That is called reprofiling of the loans. For health expenditure, this component, Mr. Speaker, will support ongoing current expenditure for the health sector. It will cover funds to be expanded on COVID-19 health response and will cover retroactive payments for liabilities incurred related to the health center. And Mr. Speaker, that means that the, 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 the debt that we have for quarantine, we inherited a lot of these debts, Mr. Speaker, that these debts are going to be paid from, from that loan, Mr. Speaker. Because as you know, COVID was very expensive and in spite of the fact that the, the last government borrowed over 300 million dollars in during that period there are still debt and liabilities left to be paid so this loan will help pay some of this inherited debt infrastructural programs this component will support ongoing infrastructural programs that commence prior to and during the covid-19 crisis the government will, will undertake to utilize monies under this component to upgrade, redevelop, and expand the infrastructure in keeping with the developmental agenda. Part of that money, Mr. Speaker, will be used to fund some of the expensive DFCs, the, the, the design finance contracts that were, that were inherited from the, the, the last government and for over a five-year period, Mr. Speaker, which is rather short-term for the construction of roads. So we're going to use some of that money to, to pay down on these DFCs to give us some more fiscal space, Mr. Speaker. Reducing the stock of payables. This component of the project will be channel funds to the domestic economy for the settlement of long-standing arrears to local contractors, service providers, and international agencies. Mr. Speaker, at the end of November, the stock, November 2022, the stock of payables was $132 million. With the majority, Mr. Speaker, outstanding is, and the total 63, the majority of it was over 120 days. Inherit, Mr. Speaker, and totaling 63.5 million of 48% of this debt. So these payables, Mr. Speaker, they've been there for a long time. They've been there for a very long time. So we, look, we are looking to see if we can use some of that money to pay down these payables, which will again help the local economy because we are going to be paying these merchants and, the, and these suppliers that the government owes for a long time, Mr. Speaker. 
Mr. Speaker will also try to reduce some of the land settlements. You know, Mr. Speaker, government land, the government acquired land, and they have not paid the have not paid the people for who they acquired that land for. And we have value is value, Mr. Speaker, that government owes about 46.3 million dollars in land valuation, which is owed to to people for which the government acquired their lands. 46. $0.3 million, Mr. Speaker. And, Mr. Speaker, you must note that when government acquires these lands, the interest rate is 6%, Mr. Speaker, on the interest rate. So this increases all, all the time. So we hope that we can use some of that money to pay the, the suppliers for the land that was acquired, Mr. Speaker. And that land was acquired for a long time, a long time before. So it's not only land acquired during our... 17 months. We've been acquired for a long time, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, looking at all the options, and I just still clear in the budget that the government will try to re reprofile its debt. That means instead of um, looking for all our needs on the short term market, basically the RSM, the government will try to get some long term financing. Long-term financing of a five-year grace period, which would be repaid in 20 years, Mr. Speaker. And the government of the and the government of Taiwan, after some negotiations, some serious negotiations, agreed to profile to help us with a long-term loan, Mr. Speaker, which will meet these requirements. And the, and this these loans were. These loans, Mr. Speaker, they were confirmed in an agreement between the government of St. Lucia and the government of Taiwan. These loans were confirmed for a period and they are in, they are in the agreement which is be made between the government of Taiwan and the people of St. Lucia. So that money is definite money that we will get, all things being equal. Mr. Speaker, we've decided to allocate this loan the 102 million US dollars in the following manner. 146.8 million to be allocated towards budgetary supports in the fiscal year 2020-2023, of which 92.9 million will be allocated for recurrent expenditure, while the sum of 53.8 million will be allocated for capital expenditure. The sum of 42.6 million to economic recovery and growth, which will include reduction in long outstanding high priority payables. The sum of 69.3 million for infrastructural programs, which includes settling long-standing high-priority land acquisition liabilities. The sum of 2.1 million for health response, and the sum of 105.9 million for recurrent expenditure to include payments to ensure the contribution of government operations in the provision of goods and services to the general public. Mr. Speaker, the terms and conditions of the loan are similar to other loans negotiated in the Exim Bank and is considered concessionary financing of the long-term type, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the repayments begin five years, after five years, and they will be basically $3.4 million in, in equal semi-annual installments of $3.404 million and they will begin five years after the loan has been fully disbursed, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, before I, I, I take my, my seat and, and invite honorable members to support this resolution, Mr. Speaker, I just want to clarify a few things on the government's debt profile. Mr. Speaker, in Parliament, and again, if you look at page 63 in my budget address, you will see it's clearly outlined, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, since we've been government for the last 17 months, we've borrowed seven times. We've come to Parliament seven times to borrow. From these seven times, Mr. Speaker, and I will at, I'll outline it, starting instrument number 2022, uh, 90, number 94, 
we borrowed $21.6 million. And that was for the census, Mr. Speaker, and that was the census that started. We had to borrow to continue. That debt was incurred before our time. Number 2022, number 92, Mr. Speaker. We borrowed from COVID, from, for COVID from the EIB, 36.4 million. Again, that's something we inherited, which we had to, we had, we had to come to Parliament to, to confirm it and to get Parliament to pass it, Mr. Speaker. And 27 million dollars from the Export Import Bank. Again, debt that we inherited, we had to come to Parliament for that resolution, Mr. Speaker. We also borrowed $20.2 million from the Sulphur, for the Sulphur Springs, from the Canadian Clean Energy Project, which, is the, which was converting the Sulphur Springs, the geothermal from the Sulphur Springs, Mr. Speaker. It's all debt which we inherited, which we had to come to Parliament, $20.2 million, Mr. Speaker. So for our 17 months in government, the only new debt that we've come to Parliament to borrow for is $27 million for the small and medium-sized enterprises, SME loan from the Caribbean Development Bank, Mr. Speaker, $0.5 million for the MOCA housing scheme, which would support, which would help the people in MOCA who are in a desperate situation, they own the credit union, they owe the credit union $500,000 and to assist the credit union, government took over the loan, Mr. Speaker, so you could assist the credit union to continue doing what it had to do, Mr. Speaker. And for the blue economy, $48.6 million. Mr. Speaker, that is, these are the facts as it relates to borrowing, which is government has borrowed, and now we come into parliament to borrow, to fund the budget for 2023 for 102 million US dollars. These are the facts, Mr. Speaker, clearly outlined in, in, in the budget, clearly outlined that that is what the government has done and the government is meeting its obligation. What you must note, Mr. Speaker, is for the last, from March, for, from the last budget to now, the government has financed its operations basically from cash flow and basically from um, from short-term borrowing on the regional securities market, Mr. Speaker. This is how the government has been financing its operations. So this is the first time that we are coming to the parliament to borrow new money to finance the 2022-2023 budget, Mr. Speaker. These are the facts as it relates to, to, to the budget. Nothing hidden. Nothing hidden, nothing done undercover, nothing done to try, try to deflect. <coughs> Clearly stated in the budget that we have to fund the, the budget by these means. And I've outlined how we borrowed it and what we borrowed before, Mr. Speaker, what, what we came to Parliament before, apart from the free loan that I've mentioned, was to meet obligations that the last government took and we came to Parliament to formalize it for a resolution. Mr. Speaker, I thank you and I ask honorable members to support this resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.